While SUVs are all anybody seems to want to buy anymore, it's worth remembering that a lot of the car-based vehicles are utility in name more than actual function. This, however, will go absolutely anywhere that you need it to. The Jeep Wrangler has been completely redone for 2018, and while it's nicer than ever to live with, it's also just as rugged as it's ever been. How does it look? If you close your eyes and think of the word Jeep, something like this shape probably comes to mind. This hardcore Wrangler Rubicon is way up high, riding on 33-inch tires mounted to cool 17-inch wheels. And while the JL Wrangler still has the iconic shape you'd expect, a close look reveals nods to modernity, like the sleeker nose and more steeply raked windshield. Halo LEDs inside the round headlamps create a really cool light signature, too. How's the storage? Now, this is, of course, the four-door Wrangler Unlimited, which means it's longer overall. So once you get by the slightly complicated tailgate opening and fold down the rear seats, you actually have a really generous cargo space. There are 72.4 total cubic feet back there, which makes it really flexible for hauling things. There's still not nearly as much interior storage space as you'd find in a typical SUV, but Jeep has been creative here at least. Nylon netting on the doors will hold lots of strangely shaped items in place, and though the two cup holders for the front seats are wedged in here, I like how a slot for your phone has been molded into the rubber. The bin under the armrest is deep, if not wide, and the smaller top portion is custom made for storing your Jeep toolkit. Is it roomy? Relative to the exterior footprint, even this four-door Wrangler is pretty tight in the cabin. At 6'5", I have just enough room behind the wheel, though my knee is pretty wedged against the center console. For average size folks, space in the back seats will be fine, as long as everyone is cool with a very upright seating position. How does the interior feel? So this regular interior is just a huge step forward from the old JK car. Everything in here looks like it's made out of leather, metal, ripstop nylon, or rubberized surfacing. In fact, even the bezel around this big infotainment screen is rubberized, making it feel like I could wash it off with a hose, though I don't think that's a good idea. Is it well equipped? The Wrangler Rubicon is still the ultimate off-road vehicle from the factory, and the spec sheet tells you why. Off-roading gear includes Dana 44 HD axles front and rear, a 4.10 axle ratio, disconnecting front sway bar, front and rear lockers, and Jeep's Rock Track four-wheel drive system. And when you do hit some boulders on the trail, rock rails and skid plates for the gas tank, transmission, and transfer case should limit the carnage. Now, Jeeps are always incredible off-road, but this Wrangler is better than ever for day-to-day -day driving, too. My highly optioned tester has LED lighting all around, a media hub with USB, USB-C, and aux connectors, heated seats, a heated steering wheel, and safety items like blind spot detection and rear parking assist. Finally, this is one of the few vehicles whose exciting options include parts that come off. Every Wrangler lets you fold the windscreen down, but now that happens with just four bolts. The three-piece Freedom Top makes it relatively simple to turn the Rubicon into a convertible. And, of course, you can take the doors off. How's the infotainment system? This Uconnect system with the big, bright 8.4-inch touchscreen display is still one of my favorites around, and it really makes the Wrangler feel modern. Truth be told, I rarely use the baked-in navigation because the integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is so good. But everything else, from changing the audio settings to seeing off-road information, is pretty clean and easy to find. Is it a good daily driver? Okay, quickly, just because I know you guys are going to call it out, no, we did not do a lot of very hardcore off-roading on this trip in Southeast Michigan. I will say, however, that when I attended the first drive launch event for this vehicle, I did a lot of legitimate rock crawling, so I can say, as you'd expect, the Wrangler is a badass off-road. Now, as for regular daily driving, uh, actually there are a lot of things that I like about driving a Jeep day-to-day. 
One is that the turning radius, even on this four-door Unlimited, is really, really good. So when you're just trying to maneuver it, it's actually pretty easy. And of course, you also have this really high up uh, seating position, so you do have a commanding view of the road. That's another thing that 33-inch tires afford you, other than just the ability to drive over huge things. On the downside, when you're on the freeway especially, even though this is a much more refined package than the old JK Wrangler, it's still a lot louder than you'd find in most other SUVs or cars. Now, when we're talking about wind noise and general NVH too, it is fair to point out again that we're driving the Rubicon version. A standard Wrangler on smaller tires that are a little bit less knobby is a lot quieter at speed. Is it fun to drive? Now, of course, most Jeep Wranglers are fun to drive simply because they're able to go just about anywhere. But when you're talking about on-road, there's actually a fair amount to be recommended here. One is that, of course, our tester has a six-speed manual transmission. And even though it's got kind of a long throw and it's a little balky, um, it still makes it really, really entertaining. The other thing is that we've got the 3.6 liter uh, V6 in here, the Pentastar engine, making 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. While that's not enough to make the Jeep actually quick, it gets out of its own way just fine. Really, at the end of the day, if your fun is about driving over stuff and not driving around corners very quickly, you're gonna enjoy this kind of a lot. How's the fuel economy? Even with a slightly more slippery shape, there's no getting around the fact that you're pushing a big blocky truck around when you drive a Wrangler. As a result, the fuel economy is pretty poor. Just 23 miles per gallon on the highway and 17 around town. How much is it? This four-door Wrangler Rubicon is loaded and the as-tested price of $49,275 reflects it. But if you want all of the Jeep with fewer amenities, you can get the basic version for $40,995. And if just any Wrangler will do, the cheapest two-door Sport starts at $27,495. And it's still pretty badass. What are the negatives? Even this newly refined JL Wrangler is still designed to be an off-road vehicle first. And that means that you're getting less fuel efficiency, less space on the inside, and less refinement overall than you would if you bought another SUV at the same price. Who should buy it? I think the Wrangler, and especially this Rubicon, fall into the category of you just know it if you want one. There's just nothing else like this beast. So if you need a car to drive, but also want to go wheeling as a hobby, you should absolutely check it out.